I'm Callie and welcome to Kapowski Reads and I'm having a, a reading day. I'm delighted. One of the prompts for the hardest reading challenge you'll ever do is to read three books in 24 hours and I thought I've got the time. It's raining outside. I'm not going out. I'll stay in and read and that sounds like a fantastic day. So I am going to start today at noon and I'm going to read until noon tomorrow. I am going to start with William by Mason Coyle because this is on my TBR and I thought let's read a book that's on my TBR. Let's do it. Let's let's have achievements. This is an ebook. I'm probably going to just be reading ebooks right now because I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed. <laughs> This is a haunted house story and it focuses on Henry who is this brilliant engineer and he's created a artificial intelligence robot called William. Henry is a tad little bit obsessed with William and the surroundings of this book all kind of focus on Henry's wife bringing her colleagues or friends round for a visit to meet her husband to see her high-tech home and things go awry. I'm really excited. <laughs> I have finished my first book of my 24-hour readathon. I had a friend while I was reading Mr. Merriweather Pippinsworth, the third. There is no first or second. <laughs> He's not even my cat. He lives next door. But he came in to spend time with me and he came and gave me lots of, well, he didn't give me pats. I gave him pats um, and we sat and read together. <laughs> he does not like the blanket downstairs, so I had to move it. I was under a blanket because I'm cold and he hates almost every blanket apart from his very special blanket upstairs. <laughs> so I had to move that because he is a diva. But he's also a very good reading companion. So i am finished my book. I'm in the corner with the Warhammer, um, keeping myself out of mischief. I finished William and I had such a good time with this in spite of the fact that I hated every single character. I think it works best when the book is kind of like a uh, horror or thriller where kind of anyone could be at risk. I think it works or it can work where you hate every character and that that happened here. We have four main characters in this book. There is Henry, our brilliant engineer. He is agoraphobic so he is his entire life is pretty much just staying in and tinkering away on William and making him the best AI he can be. And by best, I mean creepy. He is creepy. No boundaries in that guy. The AI, not Henry. Lily is Henry's wife. She is very, she knows what she wants and she's not going to ask for it politely. <laughs> very, very upfront. But at the same time, she's really confident, so like, you know, excellent, but kind of treats people a bit like employees, which in this case some of them are. She has made her millions in tech, which is why the house is so technologically advanced. Paige is Lily's friend. She is her colleague and she's just deeply unpleasant. <laughs> I don't like Paige. She gives me that vibe of, you know when you meet somebody and they are so rude and cruel but they, they'll say something like, oh I just say it as it is or you know I I've got no filter. And you're like, that's not a filter. That's like just basic manners. <laughs> there was another male character, but I have forgotten his name. I, I didn't overly like the other guy, but considering I forgot his name, he didn't make that much of an impact on me. He just seemed to have no, again, no manners. No manners. All these rich tech people, where are your manners? I love the house. The house I feel could have just been his own character. It was so high tech, even like doors and windows, curtains were opened by a voice control and they responded only to Henry and Lily. I found that William the robot just got increasingly more terrifying as the book went on. 
and by the halfway point like an absolute menace I felt like the introduction we got to William was just no no you know run away Henry William's not a good guy he's not a real guy he's not a real boy but I felt like instantly gave me the creeps and that's what I wanted I wanted a creepy robot horror story and I feel like this was a great kind of ghost story but it, by ghost I mean robot this book was just such there was such a sense of like foreboding where you knew bad things were going to happen terrible things were going to happen and you didn't want it to happen even though the characters were not overly likable in some cases forgettable but you know you're like please run away run away get out of the house please go somewhere safe and it just kind of gave me that fear of they were there were moments where they were trapped and they couldn't do something as simple as just open a door because the house is super high tech so you have to give the announcement to open a door and you can't just do it sneakily because you have to use your your big voice and I really like that I really like that element of like what happens when it all goes wrong and you just want to do something as simple as just but you can't I really like that it very much played on my fears which is excellent from an entertainment point of view but also not good from a now I'm scared of doors kind of point of view this was a very kind of oh, like claustrophobic read but I mean that in a really good way of I was just so tense I was so tense and it was just everything was very contained and it was so clever the twists in this book I did not see coming there was absolutely no part of my brain that went oh that's gonna happen no every every twisty turny took me by surprise and I was just left kind of aghast I had an amazing time with this book this was the first time I've read anything by Mason Coyle and I will be checking if they have any other books because this was a fantastic introduction to their writing wonderful writing wonderful storytelling very very creepy atmosphere which is perfect for this time of year and it was just so clever throughout the book I had some little questions where I was like mm, that doesn't make sense or wait what but by the end everything had been answered and oh I just I love the way that I kind of had to wait for some what I felt were quite obvious questions to be answered and it just improved my enjoyment it was enhanced so much I, I will rave about this book for for weeks to come I am going to go and I'm going to go and do some yoga. I have just been sitting, reading and patting my neighbour's cat <laughs> for the last few hours. So I want to do some sort of movement. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to make some soup because I'm roasting a butternut squash. And what is better on a rainy, rainy grey day than some soup? So I'm going to make roasted butternut squash soup. I have a pepper that's going in there. I've got chilies, I've got garlic, I've got coriander. I'm gonna live my best life. I'm then gonna start my next book and that's going to be Hex and Hexability by Kate Johnson. This is book three in a series but the books, I've read the first two books, these can be read as standalone. Nothing that carries from one book to the next other than just charming characters. Not the same but the characters in general tend to be quite charming which is what I really like about this author. This is book three in the best hex ever collection. There will be spice. I expect there will be spice. There were in the first two books so why not why not continue the trend? <laughs> this is a romance between a woman who's recently discovered that she is a witch and she meets this stranger sparks fly and you know romance ensues with this dishy stranger our protagonist is called tiffany and she meets this long lost aunt esme who kind of takes her under her wing and shows her the ways of of magic and that's kind of all i really know so far about this book I believe it is historical fiction as well like historical paranormal so I'm really excited and intrigued because the first two books in this series were not historical. So let's find out. But let's go, 
let's go do some bending and soup making and then then we read plan I did not really move from the sofa for most of the day. I did some yoga, but other than that, that was in front of the sofa. But I pretty much just chilled on the sofa with the cat. I have read book number two, Finished Hex and Hexability by Kate Johnson. I really liked this book and I was a little nervous going in because this was historical fiction and I wondered if there was going to be some time travel because there's time travel in the first two books which are set in modern day and then we sort of flip back and we go back in time and I was sort of I don't know I was a little uh, taken aback because I just didn't expect historical fiction even though I knew it was historical fiction if that makes any sense like it's a weird choice to have three books in a series and have the first two be current day and then have the third one be like nope regency time but I enjoyed this. I thought it was sweet. I thought that Tiffany, her character, in all honesty, her character was kind of, she just wasn't an exciting character. I know like she was a witch and that was really fun, but that was the most and only exciting thing about her. And I know historical different rules and obligations and, and all of that stuff. I, I want my characters to have a little a little zhuzh, a little something about them. And I felt Tiffany was just really boring. But Great Aunt Esme more than made up for wishy-washy Tiffany. Great Aunt Esme was so exciting, so fun. This older character who lived in this grand home with her friends, being independent, which in that time period, pretty much, I mean, I don't know. I'm not an expert on Regency era, but you know, that's kind of outside of the ordinary. And I really liked that. I really liked Aunt Esme. I really enjoyed the romance actually. And I didn't think I would, or it's not that I didn't think I would. I hoped I would, but I, I really did. I thought it was very sweet and just kind of adorable. And you couldn't help but root for them. The book got a bit smutty, which I did expect because the first two books, they had some bits of smut because of the time period in this book and the age of the main character. She was like quite young. She was an adult. I have to stress that. She definitely was an adult, but she was very, she had lived a very sheltered life and I didn't know if the book was going to go there and it did. And I thought the romance was adorable. The, the smutty bits didn't make me cringe with secondhand embarrassment, which is rare for, for me. The book had a misunderstanding trope, which I hate. I hate the misunderstanding trope. Please just use your words. And this misunderstanding took, took us like so far through the book. And, and I was like, all you have to do is just say, just say, hey, this thing. And the other person could go, what are you talking about? And it all would have been well, but we didn't get that. Instead, we just got, you know, these little passive aggressive internal little na 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 moments, <laughs> which were fun at first, but then the more it went on, I was like, just say something. The adventure in this book, the sort of focus was on this squid like creature that was in the water and was terrorizing boats and causing, causing chaos, causing deaths. And I really enjoyed finding out what it was <laughs> and why this was happening. Who was the baddie? I'm like, I was pointing fingers all around because I didn't know who the baddie was. And I really liked not knowing. I thought that the, the twist was extremely satisfying. I really liked that. And I think that this is my favorite book out of the three in this series that I have read so far. And I would not have thought that. I thought I would have just been like, no, the current day ones are my favorite. I mean, the last one had someone whose hair was like a magical hair and she was dating a dreamy, like shirtless fake magician. 
and and yet this one I loved more and you know it surprised me too I am gonna I'm gonna have a cozy night in now um we're gonna watch Strictly because I love watching Strictly um I can't dance I was once asked to leave a cardio hip-hop class because I cannot dance and I was holding everybody up but I will watch I will watch Strictly Come Dancing all day long I'm so invested I love it so I'm gonna do that then I'm gonna read in bed for a little bit I'm gonna take my makeup off so I will report back on my maybe my last book tomorrow I'm thinking of reading The Stalking Dad and I cannot remember the name of the author but I will find it this was my spookopoly first roll book and I believe this is a why choose paranormal romance which I've not read in a really really long time all I know is that it's a why choose paranormal romance and that our main character has recently left an institute she has a lot of memory loss she's done something but she doesn't know what she's done but she's finally free after a pretty long amount of time but she doesn't know what she's done and everyone's a little bit hostile towards her so I'm kind of left wondering it, is it okay like is she gonna be okay if she doesn't know why she's out and people are angry at her but I will find that out when I read the book I will report back when I have thoughts and feelings I have now finished my third book of my 24 hour readathon and my 24 hours are over and ding 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 we're counting this as a success kind of well we are but I didn't finish the book that I said I was gonna read <laughs> I started reading The Stalking Dead I DNF this book after three pages because I hated it and I'm trying to be better at DNFing books when I don't like them, especially in a 24 hour readathon. If I start reading a book that I'm not liking, I'm not going to be like, oh, I want to get through it, find out what's going to happen. I did not want to read this. I think I instantly just, I disliked the writing style immediately and I disliked the delivery. Like it felt very like, hey I bet you're wondering how I ended up here it very much felt like that which wasn't what I wanted and I don't know it's just there was something you know when you know I knew and I was like nope put it down and instead I picked up a different book which is on my TBR for October so I'm feeling so accomplished right now. I read and finished Oops I Ate A Vengeance Demon by Loretta Hignett and just as I said I felt accomplished I had a coughing fit so maybe I don't feel that accomplished in life but when it comes to my 24 hour readathon I, I did it. I achieved my goal. So this book is pretty much what it says. Our main character is a young mum extremely hard-working hairdresser super stressed husband who's like what I have to help around the house I have to look after my own kid while you're working 50 hour weeks what um so she's extremely stressed and she finds herself possessed by a vengeance demon and this vengeance demon seeks revenge on bad men and when I say bad men I mean like there's a spectrum of course of what is good and bad but it is made very clear in this book like some of these men are like the worst of the worst dangerous dangerous horrible men um who are harming people and it kind of becomes a little bit of like a buddy cop book <laughs> where our main character is possessed but there are little conversations that she has with the vengeance demon inside her head and the vengeance demon is actually helping her with uh, an issue she has with her friends where one of her friends has had some explicit pictures taken from her phone they weren't sent to anyone they just were on her phone and somebody is threatening to leak those 
So off she goes with her friends to try and like find out who who is it? And little vengeance demon inside her head is like, no, not him, not him, not him. And I absolutely love that. I love a sort of possession story where the the demon in this case is its own character. And I thought it was so clever and it was so fun. And I loved all of the characters in this book. And I was really, really just, I wanted to know what was going to happen next. And I was so invested. We also have an older aunt character who is a witch. We've got all of these sort of like paranormal goings on. And it, this book was just what I wanted. It was fun. It was so quick paced lovable characters, satisfying investigations, a little bit of potential romance, and gorgeous friendship moments, wonderful characters, look like enough, nice little reunions. I want to read more of these books. This is a series and I want to read more of them because I had the best time with this book. It was so fun. I, I chortled, I chortled at it and it was just the best fun. I feel like making the change to this book was the right decision for me. So I have finished my three books. I have had a fantastic time with them and I am calling this a success. I'm so happy and I have a new series that I want to read. What more could I ask for? I mean, not to be coughing would be great, but it's autumn. The air is cold. I cough. <laughs> I'd love to know what you've been reading lately. Thank you so much for watching.